Hey yeah, guys, it's me again, doing a follow-up video to uh, my previous one, where I was uh, testing the theory on too much control authority in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, my previous post uh, got some good discussion there, there was uh, some interesting posts by uh, some other people. Uh, one in particular caught my attention. Uh, where the user had suggested that the control surfaces were not changing sensitivity based on the airspeed of the aircraft. Uh, I thought that was interesting and uh, would definitely explain a bit if the planes were acting as if uh, they had full speed over the control surfaces even when they were barely moving. So I thought that would be uh, worthy of testing. Um, and uh, I, I actually discovered something else testing it that uh, I thought was kind of interesting and uh, actually just kind of leaves me with more questions than uh, solving anything. Um, again, most of the testing in this is done in a DA-20 uh, simply because that's the only one of these aircraft I have any kind of extensive familiarity with. Uh, I have flown a 172 uh, at some point years ago, uh, but I have a lot more time in a, a DA-20. Uh, although even then, that was, uh, it's been, I don't know, 15, 16 years since I've been in the cockpit of one. Uh, also want to say I, I recognize that uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, this is not a study simulator. And these planes aren't designed to be flown exactly to massive exacting detail of the real ones. Uh, having said that, I still think there's a couple of uh, weird things going on that's uh, worthy of checking out. I uh, was tooling around in the Cub here briefly, um, and I will say, uh, just in my kind of messing around here, uh, the Cub actually felt pretty good. Uh, I've never flown one in real life, so I don't know how the real one acts, but I didn't uh, notice anything that uh, kind of made me go, uh, when I was flying this thing around. So that's a good thing. Alright, so we're going to start our testing again in the DA-20. And uh, here I'm just established at uh, cruise speed around 100 knots. Go to the external camera. In here I'm just uh, I'm testing roll, the uh, aileron authority. Um, and right now it uh, it doesn't feel bad. Uh, this feels about right. Uh, I'm using just over half stick deflections. Uh, even though I'm at about minus 40% sensitivity on my purple. Uh, so roll felt okay. Uh, right here I'm just uh, trying to bleed some speed. To pull the air speed back. So here I've kind of established it in a climb. Um, and you can see it in here, I'm using roughly the same control inputs, and the roll is definitely slower. Uh, it, it's absolutely not rolling with the same authority it did when I was at a uh, cruise setting. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, that's expected behavior, that's what we want to see. So back in the cockpit. Uh, now I'm using full control deflections around cruise, uh, and again, this this feels pretty good to me. Uh, that's about what I would expect from uh, this aircraft. Uh, nothing there feels wonky. Uh, you can see a bit here I'm still fighting with the trim, uh, which I'll come back to later in the video. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to establish uh, slow flight. Uh, for those who don't know, slow flight is uh, basically you go on the back side of the power curve. Uh, and uh, again, I'm, I'm using pretty aggressive control uh, deflections here. And again, it, it, rolling the plane feels okay. Uh, that It definitely was not as snappy. You can see that it, there was a bit of a delay rolling in. Um, as opposed to when I was doing the uh, full control deflections at cruise. 
So now we're pulling the speed back even more. You can see here a bit, I'm still struggling with the pitch. Uh, maintaining a constant uh, pitch input is very difficult. And again, now you, you can really see how lethargic the rolling is in this. Um, so again, I'm happy to see that. Um, you know, anecdotally, I probably would have noticed it just normal flying around if it was wonky, but this is the first time I actually sat down and tested it. Uh, so again, that's expected behavior. Happy to see it. Um, into a bit of a stall there. So that's good. So, so far, nothing, uh, nothing wacky. Here we're back to cruise, and uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can see, again, like the controls are more snappy. Um, again, that, that's expected behavior. This is what, what I want to see, which is good. Now here's where things get a little interesting. I just did a half Cuban in a DA20 at 95 knots. Now this is a utility aircraft, it's not certified for aerobatics, so I don't know that anyone's actually done that, because uh, it's actually illegal to do that in this type. Um, I have trouble believing that this aircraft has the elevator authority to pull that off that cleanly, uh, especially without stalling. I mean, I, I had a lot of back pressure on that stick. You heard the stall horn go off, and the plane didn't stall. Um, I mean, I would have thought that would have pushed it past the critical AOA, but that's uh, that's just me. Either way, um, like I said, I, I have trouble believing that this aircraft should have had the elevator authority to do that. Uh, so here I just tried doing it again at a much lower speed, and uh, we just got a very aggressive stall uh, with left wing drop, uh, which is expected, that's fine. Um, happy to see the left wing drop in there actually, which is good. Uh, recovery can be that quick. Um, I did do a very rapid recovery at flight school once my instructor was not impressed when I pushed negative G's leveling the nose afterward. So just for fun here we'll go land at uh, this little closed airstrip from this position. I'm high and close. Um, well that's okay because it's going to give us the opportunity to test something else here with the flight controls. So here we are going to start a nice slipping turn and see how the airplane reacts. Again, this is also partially testing our control authority, uh, seeing what we got. And uh, I mean, I'm pulling more than 2,000 feet per minute descent right there in a slipping turn. Um, that's actually kind of awesome. This is a really sloppy landing. So, you know, don't look if you're squeamish about horrible flying. Uh, so here we go into a forward slip, uh, same thing, just kind of testing that, and I got the rudder floored right now, uh, which is pretty good actually, this is, uh, this is a nice aggressive slip, I'm seeing a really high descent rate, which is good. Uh, again, this is expected behavior, uh, the way the nose swings back in a line, expected behavior, um, not breaking your back on this landing, not expected behavior, but I can uh, very much live with that. Uh, brakes seem very effective, but uh, I mean, again, these are kind of really minor nitpicks here. But I thought this would be a good opportunity to once again test our short field takeoff, and this is where I discovered something else interesting. Alright, so same procedure as before, flaps takeoff, power holding the stick back, nose comes up, tail strikes the ground, yep. We established this in the other video, we can repeat it, ad infinitum, no problem. However, let's try it with the flaps up. Huh. Now, isn't this interesting? With the flaps up, it doesn't happen. So, yeah. Um, we drop the flaps, and uh, we can uh, 
do it, and yeah, <laughs> landing flops, it really comes up. Uh, so I'm honestly not sure what to make of this. Um, yeah, here, I'm just checking my oil temperatures and everything. Uh, that, that definitely cooked the uh, engine a bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we tried again. Flaps up, full power. Uh, elevator all the way back, and the nose doesn't come up. Uh, so this partially might put a hole in the theory that the uh, elevator has too much authority. Um, I mean, with the flaps down, uh, with the uh, propeller, uh, with the prop wash coming over the wings, especially the inner wings, you got way more lift coming off the wings. Um, but again, I'm not too sure why that should have a difference here. Uh, because it's airflow over the elevator that's going to raise or lower our tail. Um, and I mean, unless there's some weird aerodynamic stuff going on there, I, I don't see how, but like what kind of difference that should make. Um, but either way, I, I, I thought this was a rather interesting discovery. So here I thought we'd try the uh, short field takeoff with the uh, flaps up and uh, see what happens. Um, so we start rolling and I mean I'm already at this point able to pick the nose up off the pavement and uh, again this shouldn't be happening. Uh, there should not be either the control authority or the lift generation to get that nose off the ground. So here are just over 40 knots this is where it should come up. Um, but otherwise, uh, this takeoff is more or less what I'd expect from a short field takeoff in this aircraft with the flaps at takeoff. Uh, certainly not with the flaps up. Uh, I was reviewing the POH for this aircraft and it's actually designed to be flown climbing with takeoff flaps. Um, you know, you're not necessarily supposed to retract them as soon as you're in the air, and it certainly isn't supposed to do a short field takeoff with the flaps up. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm not really sure what to make of that. Uh, so here we've kind of got a combination of too much lift and too much authority on the elevator. Alright, so here we're just trying our normal technique again with the flaps course tail strike um, so here I'm not holding the brakes not holding the stick all the way back and I'm just trying to balance it on the mains and y you can see how much difficulty I'm having here particularly with the pitch control uh, the rudder is really effective too but uh, yeah I'll, I'll throw that one to the side right now um, but I do manage to more or less balance it on the mains um, and get it in the air pretty quick. Uh, this is a different airfield, unfortunately. I actually couldn't remember the other one when I was uh, restarting the sim. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that was uh, that was okay, but it, it, again, it, it seemed way too much pitch authority there. Should not have had near that difficulty uh, controlling the nose. So here we're back to testing our control authority. Uh, roll still feels good. Don't have an issue with that. At cruise, I go 95. Pitch to me still feels too sensitive. Uh, right there, I, I'm actually fussing with the trim wheel. That's not with my stick. I'm doing that with trim. Uh, which is not normal. I should not be able to do that. Uh, so here what I'm doing is I'm just, um, I'm setting my uh, sensitivity once I can remember where it is. Because uh, I have a huge sensitivity curve set, I'm, I'm just getting rid of those. I'm going to go back to a minute, uh, for a minute, back to uh, raw control input here. So here I've got my controls completely linear. And hopefully this gives us a one-to-one -one of the uh, stick to stick in the game. It actually doesn't. Um, so controls are way sensitive. Like I'm barely moving my stick here, but you know, whatever. We can deal with that. 
Uh, that's not really what I wanted to test here anyway. This next bit, we're going to uh, watch our control surfaces. Now, notice how little the elevator is moving there. Uh, the ailerons look okay to me. Uh, I'm seeing a roll right here. Like, that's full deflection or nearly full deflection. Uh, and that looks okay. Like, the, the amount the ailerons are moving versus the amount the planes rolling uh that looks fine the the elevator to me still looks not fine um uh, so just nice gentle rolls That's the um, as you can see like, like you can barely see the elevator moving there and this is giving me you can see more there because I do some more aggressive input. Uh, but you can see that this gives me very aggressive changes in pitch uh, for the amount it's moving. Uh, maybe this is normal. It, it just... It doesn't look right to me. I mean, here we go right over the top again. Which, uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm not convinced there's not something messed up here in the uh, relationship between the uh, elevator and the uh, lift. Um, I, I think in this video I pretty much established that uh, ailerons are fine. Um, the rudder on the ground to me isn't handling properly, uh, but in the air it feels fine. I, like, I mean, here I'm, I'm doing, you know, different slipping turns, um, and the rudder doesn't seem overly authoritative to me. Uh, the rudder is very authoritative, especially on this aircraft. It's a very big rudder and a very light airplane. Uh, but, but this doesn't seem out of whack to me. I mean, I'm going to forward slip here, you know, keeping track. Full rudder. About, you know, 15 to 20 degrees of bank, that's fine. Uh, but the elevator still feels wrong. Um, and I still think I'm getting too much pitch authority. So that's that. At the end of this testing, I, I think what I've established is... Uh, ailerons are good, uh, at least on the DA-20. Uh, roll authority feels fine. Roll authority changes based on speed. Uh, there seems to be some strange relationship between lift generation and elevator authority. I'm not sure what's going on there, uh, but I think the uh, uh, nose coming up, you know, with the flaps down, and but not with the flaps up on a T-tail airplane where there should be no difference in actual pitch authority sitting on the ground. Uh, that I, I still think there's something weird there uh, and uh, definitely worthy of some more investigation. So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on uh, what I've shown here. And uh, I don't know, maybe we can figure out what's going on. Thanks.